Hi, I'm Dr. Schaefer. I'm an endoscopic nasal and sinus surgeon for over 20 years. I'm going to discuss some of the issues related to sinus problems. 37 million Americans suffer with sinusitis. That's an infection in the sinuses. The sinuses are air-containing spaces that are located in the head. There are four sinuses on each side of your face. The cheek or maxillary sinuses, the eye sinuses, ethmoid sinuses, or the forehead or frontal sinuses, and a back sphenoid sinus. They all produce mucus, which drains in through the nose to help cleanse the nose and respiratory tree. We all produce about one to two liters of mucus a day, which we're not even aware of. It just drains into the back of our throat. But when we get a sinus infection, that mucus builds up and goes from a clear mucus to thick, white, yellow, then green. Uh, as the mucus stagnates into the sinus areas, it causes pressure over these areas on our face. Uh, and that is typical of a sinus infection. Sometimes it can cause blockage in our nose so we can't breathe properly and uh, a drip. Also, you can have other symptoms related to the sinus infection, cough, mucus and phlegm in the throat, fatigue, fever, uh, and this is pretty typical of a sinus infection. Most people can clear their own sinus infections, but when you can't, you need to see the doctor, and typically, since it's a bacterial infection, an antibiotic will need to be prescribed. If the symptoms persist despite uh, several courses of antibiotics and being placed on nasal sprays such as uh, saline irrigations like a neti pot or neal med sinus rinse, uh, the symptoms still persist. We obtain a CAT scan of the sinuses. Initially when you see us in our office, we uh, evaluate you by placing a small telescope inside the nose under a topical anesthesia and we drain out the mucus and evaluate to see if there are polyps deviated nasal septum, or what is the anatomical variation inside your nose that's contributing to the sinus infection. As a result of all this information, uh, if your symptoms last for more than three months, we sometimes propose that you are a candidate for a sinus operation, which is called endoscopic sinus surgery. This is performed as an outpatient under general anesthesia at an outpatient facility. You're put to sleep for about an hour, we work in through the nose with a little telescope and remove the blockages, straighten the nasal septum, remove the crooked cartilage and bone, and open the sinuses. I do not pack the sinuses, so my patients are usually breathing pretty well after the surgery, though there's going to be some stuffiness. Um, you need about a week out of work, two weeks out of heavy lifting or exercising. We recommend that you stay off aspirin, Advil, Motrin, Nuprin, Aleve. Uh, two weeks before to two weeks after, since this can thin out the blood and make you bleed. Tylenol okay, is okay. Uh, we usually give you pain medicines for the first night. Usually, it's, it's uncommon that you need to use it for longer periods of time. You usually see me weekly uh, for the first three to five weeks as the sinus cavities are healing. Afterwards, uh, most patients are feeling better. You still may have some symptoms of sinusitis because each person is different, but the intensity, duration, and frequency of the infection should be much less. Uh, Follow-up is important, and seeing an allergist pre- and post-surgery is sometimes recommended also. Hi, I wanted to tell you about a new revolutionary procedure that is instead of endoscopic sinus surgery. This procedure is called balloon sinus surgery in the office under a local anesthesia. The advantages of this procedure are you don't have to undergo general anesthesia, recovery periods much less, 24 hours, and there's virtually no bleeding. There's much less discomfort and uh, it's tolerated well by the patients. However, not all the patients are candidates for this procedure. Patients that have extensive polyps that need to be removed are not a candidate for this balloon since we're just opening up the sinuses. But patients with mild to moderate sinusitis that have failed medical treatment, that means they've been on several courses of antibiotics, nasal sprays, and the routine, this option may be available for them. As a, a principal investigator in doing the research for the balloon technology in 2009, my office was the uh, research center in the Northeast. This helped pave the way for this procedure to become a clinical entity. A common question people ask is, do I need the balloon procedure? And the answer is, it's very difficult to tell without a proper evaluation. Some patients 
uh, are not a candidate for the balloon procedure when they have extensive polyps, a severely deviated septum, which would mean that we can't get the balloon into the proper alignment in the office, despite local anesthesia, or if you have significant uh, sinus infection in the back uh, eye sinus, the ethmoid sinus. These may be contraindications to doing the procedure, but there are a fair amount of patients that, despite some of these limitations, uh, I've been able to undergo the procedure for the patient. Severe polyps, though, is definitely a contraindication to the procedure since those polyps probably need to be removed, and the balloon procedure, since it's minimally invasive, does not remove tissue, which means the chance of bleeding is much, much less.